Yeah, so, uh, I don't know, really know where this interview is going. I mean, this is... Well, this I mean, you out. got the whole blurry thing going on. I was don't wondering. worry about what I've got going on. I was on. wondering if I could get some of that. Just, come on. It's, this is for me. Let me, let me, let me blur, yeah, you can, I, can I blur it out? Yeah, thank you. Oh. Oh, this is nice. Yeah. You just see like this all the time. Yeah. It's nice. For legal yeah. reasons, it's really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, trust me. Interesting. You can get away with murder. All right, here you go. Thank you. You can have it back. Um, so, yeah, all we're going to do is talk about the frights. Oh, this is the frights. That's all this is about. It's the frights. Oh. We're not talking about Fiddler? Uh... I thought this was a Fiddler interview. What? Are you kidding me? What are we doing here? Seriously, what are we doing here? Me and you, what are we doing here? You know what, we're out. Let's cut it out. Fuck this, man. I'm over this. Some bullshit. You know what? You come in, waste my time. Waste my energy. I got things to do. Chris Brown needs a track right now. You understand that? Chris Brown. I gotta go. See ya. Chris Brown! Super, super unprofessional. I mean, I don't know how more unprofessional you can get. Fiddler? Man, must have been like three or four years ago. We just kept getting this email. Seriously. Frights at yahoo.com or some shit like that. And I'm just like, who are these guys? And they just, it was like clockwork. Every two weeks, yeah. get an email being, hey, we'd really like to open up a show with you guys. Really like to open up a show, you know? And finally, San Diego, we play San Diego. We're like, you know what? Let's put the frights on the bill. <laughs> Let's give them a shot. Let's give them a shot. See what they got. <laughs> were sick it was good um once i heard them play live i was like oh shit like we can actually do something here you know they have that thing that the, the catchy songs masked behind a bunch of distortion and yelling it's pretty pretty much my jam. They gave me a demo, the demo sucked. The quality of it was just like, oh God, gnarly, you know? And there's all this like kind of beachy, surfy kind of stuff, which is awesome, I love that. I remember I told Mikey, I was like, dude, let's just do a song. And then he came he came over and it was like in the, s the middle of summer, super hot. He's wearing like jeans. And I'm like, what, what, what's up, dude? Like, why are you wearing jeans? He's like, oh, I just I always wear jeans, you know? And then a couple, like a couple weeks later, he's wearing shorts and he ends up having a Fiddler tattoo that he didn't want me to see. <laughs> yeah, we used to live there and set up a studio in there and hit record. And that's where you made the first Fiddler record? That's where we made the first Fiddler record. Now it's like, it turned into some art studio bullshit. It's bullshit. Art. Some art bullshit. The Frights record was the last record made in that studio. going to hate this. It's a different record. It's not what people expect the Frights to make. Right, right, right. And how did, how did that title come about, by the way? We're trying to figure out what to call it. After a bunch of profane slurs, you know, I remember when we were recording it and all these songs and, all, and, and putting it all together, I remember turning to Mikey and being like, you know, man, your fans are gonna hate this. <laughs> They weren't afraid to try new things. And that's, that's a very unique thing to find in a band. You're usually 
advanced. Like they find one thing and then they just do that until they get sick of it, right? It seemed like with them, the more I talked to them, the more I was like, like Richard's like an art dude. Right. Oh, crazy. Like the dude listens to like, I don't know, Enya and like Bjork and shit like that. It's not relevant. You put your stand on two, uh, these two guys right here. All right, here we go. You know, and Mikey's just likes indie pop music and pop music in general, you know, like Mark. Great drummer. Yeah, not too much of uh, anything else, you know? So it's like, the more I realized, I was like, wait, you, so you guys aren't really like garage rocky dudes. It's like, no, we just kind of landed playing, you know, you know, you know? And then the more I talked to Mikey, I remember Mikey, we really connected on that. He, he was a huge fan of Modest Mouse, you know? And that was like good news for people of bad news. I was like, dude, that record is just like awesome. I was talking like, I want, I want something kind of like with that kind of production, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, good. So it gave me that kind of desire to kind of challenge myself to do something different. In my head, I find better! In my Fucking head. better! One, two, one, two, three, four. I mean, it's an amazing opener. It, you know, it, it sort of combines punk and the doo-wop side with some like super cool production stuff that you've done. I mean, was that... Was that like a decision made early on to put this song first on the record? Uh, yeah, a little bit, totally, because uh, the lyrics. Is this what I'm supposed to do, blow up my vocal cords for you and not trying to cause a scene, screamed about things I don't mean, you know? And it's supposed to be like, fucking, like, whatever they're listening to, we were trying to destroy it. Like, headphones just fucking blow them out. We're like, this should be the first song. Just blow out the fucking very first song. They hit loud as hell. And then it was all of a like, in my hands. Like, this is old frights. This is what you want. This is what we're giving you. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what it was. What more do you want? It's about him being in a band, playing shows. Like, is this what I'm supposed to do? Blow out my vocal cords for you, you know? Like, and then everybody leaves and goes home, you know? And they miss him but then they don't really know who he is. And he's the one that's left at home jerking off or fucking drinking beers, you know what I mean? Yeah, they didn't want to put this song on the record. Really? Yeah. This is like the first single. Yeah. Are you kidding me? You know, like it was one of those, and it was an old song that they had on a on a different, like an EP or something, you know. And I was like, dude, that song's the jam, man. Yeah, the the chorus is actually uh, smaller than the verses. Like as far as how many tracks there are, there's, I was I was really into spacing at that time. Like I was like, I want a less is more thing, you know. It's a hard thing with bands too, is like learning how to play that less is more, you know? But these guys got it. Like, yeah, you're right. Especially Richard. Oh my God, whatever! So I was on this crazy fucking diet, like this whole time while making this record. I'm not even joking. So I'll drink coffee, like really good coffee, and put a bunch of butter in it with some MCT oil and blend it up in my Nutribullet, pound that whole thing, and not eat till like 8 p.m. When I would eat, I would make like three Nutribullets of like beets and vegetables and bananas. You were on fire. Oh my God, I was crazy. I lost like crazy weight. But like, <laughs> I was also like, Mikey was like, dude, you need to like get out of the house. So I went a little nuts. Mm -hmm. It was a good time for me to do this record. Mm -hmm. 
not gonna lie, because I was kind of off of my fucking head. Mm-hmm. Um, it was kind of, I kind of disconnected from the world, really. And I was on this crazy, like, what basically I wanted to do is I wanted to get to level two. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wanted to level up. You get, like, you know, good shit in you, and your brain, like, is level two, you know what I'm saying? Or did you force them to sort of be on the same? I think they tried it, and they, like, tried the coffee or something like that, and they just, like, they're like, no, we can't do that. It's Because it, like, tweaks you out super hard. So they went to the taco truck. Yeah, they wanted to jack in a box down the street <laughs> every day. How many tacos were eaten during the making of this record? You know what, I think, I think the taco burrito ratio was about six to two. The record is, 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 is all over the place, you know? It's super adventurous. It seems like maybe, maybe the, way, the way you were at that point had something to do with the sound of the record. Yeah. I'm... I mean, was it conscious to make, a, to make a record that was a lot different than anything they had done before? We're recording an album with Zach from Fiddler, but he's losing his he's losing his mind, guys. What were you guys wearing during the making of the record? Um It's a tough one. I mostly wore uh, these pink underwears that I have. Um, helps me think. No shirt, obviously. You gonna fuck my record up, boys? Huh? Uh, no pants. Um, they probably shop at Polo, seems like. I think that's their go-to. Maybe some BR, some B Republic. And meanwhile, you're working on the record while they went back down to San Diego. That's right. And that's where it gets weird. That's that's where you let it get weird. Huh? I, uh, you know, those were blackout moments. Those were dark times. I don't I don't want to talk about that. Speaking of dark times, tell us all about Mikey. Like, what's he what's he really like? He's a bro. He's such a bro. I love it. Yeah, he's great. No, he's, uh, yeah, Mikey's, Mikey's, be, even without, like, the band and stuff like that, he's, a, like, a good friend, you know? Like, dude calls me up and, like, checks in, you know what I mean? There's not much people that do that. Um, but, uh, amazing songwriter. Dude can, that's the thing for melodies and, <clears throat> melodies and, uh, you know, Lyrics. This is where it all fucking happens, honestly. I mean, we get in here and we pull our shit out, uh, guitars, and we jam. Yeah. All right, what about Richard, though? I mean, is he, is he, is he Richard's okay? a square. He has a square. Really deep down inside. He's from Texas. Can't trust anybody from Texas. And Mark, I mean, he is clearly the best looking member. Am I right? Yeah. Puppy Knuckles, for example. Mm. That song is so different, you know, from anything they've done before. You know, so were they were they they were okay with that kind of stretch? I mean I mean, tell us about that song. It's so cool, it's so different. I mean halftime. Oh uh, yeah. That it's actually probably and this song in general, like I focused on that part first. Cause I want I wanted to make that sound like this, you know? Okay. 
Remember the drums were like so fun to do. It's the reversing of the tom, you know? Boom, boom, boom. I remember that one. That was a, I think that was like my funnest one to do. I was trying to make it work. There is a version of it with this just like, it's totally different. The song was fucking unbelievably changed from what it was before. Um, <laughs> and we were originally going for it, it was gonna be like a like pop, and that was like, it was like a big bam, 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 bam. Oh yeah. It's a bit like that, like very tight. I recorded the drums, recorded the bass, recorded some guitar and a vocal. And uh, Zach called me, he was like, hey, it's sounding super like, like super lame. And the more I listened to them, I'm like, dude, I called Mikey up and I was like, look, dude, you're just gonna have to trust me on this. I'm gonna take this into a different approach, you know? And he was like, cool, do your thing. Um, and I deleted everything. <laughs> he took out all the uh, bass, all the guitar. All he left was vocals and drums and added a synthesizer. I wanted to make it sound super creepy, you know? I feel like it should be like kind of a stocky song, you know? I want your number, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's super stocky, you know? And like, um, yeah, I wanted it to sound a little spooks. Of age. That, that was the first song we recorded. That's the first song, yeah. the last song on the record. The last song on the record is the first song we recorded. Is that a ukulele? That is. Why yeah. is there a ukulele on there? Um, because Mikey has a hard time playing guitar. <laughs> and the ukulele actually was more of a thing. It became like, just kept saying, dude, Urban Outfitters, man, you know? Like, ukulele. Who played it? I did, man. You play ukulele? I'm from Hawaii. Look, let me tell you a thing, too. Ukulele, macadamia nuts. That's what we're good at in Hawaii. Noted. Noted. So, one time I was like, you know what? And this is, I did this one time and that was it. I was like, I'm gonna get him fucking wasted. Cause I really wanted a drunk sound. I learned this the hard way. This is the other song that he got me very drunk for also, for vocals. Cause he'd get me drunk and then he'd talk to me cause I just broke up with my girlfriend at the time. And he talked to me about, uh, he'd be like, like tell me about your girlfriend. He'd get me super sad and I was fucking hammered. Me, like cr almost crying. He's like, oh, let's go do a take. And it was like midnight. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me, dude? I sound like a pussy. And he was like, yeah, you do. It's awesome. <laughs> He's like, embrace the inner pussy. <laughs> no, literally. And I, I, I puked all over myself that night. Then he learned. <laughs> Never again. God, last time I ever do that. But then, but then, you know what? Afterwards, he was like, hey, let's just just get me drunk again. I'm like, no, 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 no. That didn't work out good. He was throwing up in the, in the bathroom, you know, just barfing everywhere, just talking, crying. <laughs> just... <laughs> Everything, dude. It's just like, it's pretty funny. This is my favorite. Skateboarder. I think, yeah, this was the first song we recorded. And it was the last song I mixed. So it was like, it's funny because it was the first one we're like, okay, let's get this one. It's like, oh, great, you know? And then when I got down to mix it, I like was afraid to touch that one, get into that one because I had a feeling I was gonna go deep into it, you know? Um, and it wanted to make it sound sm like it was building, you know, the whole thing. Like, it's not a very traditional sense, not a, like a, like, structural song, you know what I mean? Like, there's no real chorus to the song. If that's the chorus, I don't know if that's the chorus, you know, like, it's more of, like, poetry. This is my favorite song I've ever read. It just has everything. Especially for this record, like everything that we said, like on kids, like afraid of the dark, like all those things are about different things, and all those things are in this song too. 
It's like a like a it's like a autobiography kind of lyrically at least. Yeah. Like I'll bring on my girlfriend, bring on my friend, growing up, all the good shit. That's <laughs> why so he was. This one was hard for him to do because it's like, it's actually shit that he's going through now, you know, that he's growing up, he's coming of age, and he's like, wait a minute, like, like that line, I'm trying to sell out because he has to fucking pay rent, you know what I mean? I don't know what that is. <laughs> That's the tropical beat. <laughs> um, yeah, and he was going through some relationship shit at this time, I remember, and it was like, it was a perfect time for him to like write good lyrics, you know what I mean? And he's just, it, it is like, the whole record just like screams that coming of age, you know what I mean? It's just getting older and like, 19 to 21, you know, it's just like, fucked. <laughs> You're fucked. You are fucked, and you're gonna hate this. 